Today I'm going to talk about hash definitions and the compare tool within TwinSafe. The first thing I'm going to do is under my project, add hash definitions. And you can see whenever it shows up green, that means everything is new. This is a brand new hash definition. I'm going to save. Now I could just use this default hash definition, but I also have the ability to create custom ones. So let's add in a new one and let's call this one hardware. And over on the right, every single element within my TwinSafe project is identified with a hash. I'm going to choose just the hardware elements, which means that now software is not going to be tracked as part of this. Next, I'm going to add in the complement, which is the other side, anything that's not selected. This makes a lot of sense for hardware versus software. So we'll call this one software. And these are going to be my baselines that I'm going to compare against. And now all software is selected. Well, hardware is not, so I can track it in two different locations. It could be hardware software. It could also be uh, individual pieces of hardware. It could be individual function blocks or safety functions within my project. Really anything that makes sense for what you're trying to do. And then I'm going to save these as a baseline. So I'm going to select hardware and I'm going to call this hardware baseline. Choose software, same thing. And save. Now when I go into my TwinSafe group, I'm gonna make a quick little change to the hardware. So on my green light, rather than output module three, I'm gonna change it to output module two. And save, verify my project, go back to my hashes. Now on the next tab, I can do my compares. I'm gonna leave the checkbox, use current definitions as the left side. So that's what's in the current project, not what I previously saved. And I'm gonna choose on the right side, my baseline. Let's choose hardware baseline. And refresh. Now you see the default hash table, that was the one that came up automatically, that includes everything in the project. But now I can also look at my custom hash definitions. So you can see hardware, I'm showing red. That means that I've got some changes. I could follow the, uh, the breadcrumbs through and exactly where that particular element is, or I can hit this handy little filter button on the top. And here we'll see that under twin safe group one, uh, green light, the target usage is different. The values are different where we just changed it to output module two. My baseline, which is on the right, is going to be module three. Now, if I look at my other hash definitions, for example, software, I didn't track any of that as part of this baseline, so we're not going to see it. Now, let's take a look at what it means for software. So I'm going to set this back to the original. All right, I've returned the project the way that it was before. Now, instead of moving the green light hardware, we're going to change the software location and the call location in our function blocks. We're going to delete that green light. So after I've made my software change, I've moved green light from e-stop out to e-stop delayed out. I can go check my hashes again. Uh, you can see during this demonstration, I keep opening and closing this file. If you don't do that during your own testing, just make sure that you hit this refresh entire tree whenever you come in here and that will update from whatever we've done on the SAL and it'll propagate through here. So now we're going to do a compare and we're still going to use the current definition as the left side and on the right side, I'm going to choose my software baseline. Once I refresh that, you'll see the default hash table shows changes. Hardware doesn't. We're not tracking it in that hash definition. And then the software does. So when I filter, what we're going to see is actually three changes. On the source usage of the variable green light, it's not connected to where it was. So that's the first change that we see. And then at the function block level where green light was connected to the e-stop out port, it no longer is. And then on e-stop delay output, it is connected currently, but it wasn't before. So in this way, we can really track exactly everything that goes on within our project.